She may have just been 14 years old, but Sarah Bame of Rochester Township lived a secret and troubled life. No one, not even her family members, knew the pain she had been enduring before she disappeared in July 1994. And it was on these riverbanks where her loved ones tried desperately to find her, hoping bad news would turn into a miracle. Tragically, that was not to be the case. Sarah lost her life. But today, 20 years later, circumstances surrounding her death remain unexplained. Join us now as we attempt to break new ground on this mystery. We will hear from Sarah's family and get the latest on the investigation from law enforcement officials who continue to analyze evidence. What happened to Sarah Bame? I'm LeVar McBride and this is Cold Case Beaver County. You got three people of interest still say, I do. Three people of interest, and then you get that blank face. Now that's why nobody really knows if she is dead or alive. You were set free, and you were set free to go kill. We've never gotten that one break. We've never gotten that one break. You know, we will though. It is the 14th of July, 1994. Sarah Bame has told her family that she will be spending the night with a girlfriend down the street. In an exclusive interview with the Times, Sarah's brother, Mason Bame, recounts what happened the day his sister first went missing. And my mom says, get her, tell her to get home and, you know, wait for me to get home from work. I said, okay. So that's when we found out I called her girlfriend's house and they said, no, she never stayed here. And I said, what? And that's when I, that's when we all started to, like, that's when panic mode kicked in. Okay, this, this is serious. Where is she? It was reported as a missing person uh, or a runaway type of case. The police at that time, the Rochester Township Police, treated it that way. Um, they took some information, put her out as a missing person, and it, uh, I don't want to say it was considered low priority, but it was not investigated as something more serious than that. There was like, there were several sightings. Uh, there was a lead that we followed up that she was sighted at King's, that she was sighted at Sheets, that there was an actual video uh, that they were claiming it, it was Sarah at uh, Deer Lane Grill in Rochester. But nothing was ever concluded. Six long years go by. Based on what they've learned, the Rochester Township Police believe Sarah is still alive and hiding or being hidden somewhere around town. In August of 2000, Beaver County detectives take over as the lead investigators in the case. As they collect and examine all the case files from Rochester Township Police, the county detectives are shocked at what they do and don't find. We had shoe boxes full of leads that we had to wade through and call that virtually went probably 45 of the 50 states in the United States we had made calls to. And it took us a long time to do this. Now, none of the leads panned out. We ended up with nothing. Sarah's uncle, Kevin Bain, doesn't believe Sarah would have run away on her own. His suspicions center on Sarah's supposed boyfriend. I don't think she just got up and said, decided one morning, no. one night, that, hey, I'm leaving by herself. She wouldn't have done it. No way. Somebody was taking her. She went with somebody. That could have been that older guy she talks about in the letter, the abusive older guy. One of the key clues lies in a note that Sarah had left under her pillow, a note that her family doesn't come across until two days after her disappearance. In it, Sarah talks about having a relationship with someone she calls a very, very abusive man. She asks, did anyone wonder why I always had injuries and said I fell? In that same note, Sarah details a hidden life of problems and pain. She says she felt that she was never good enough, that in despair she would stop eating to the point of passing out, and she says that she would probably be better off and happier on her own. Ten months prior to her disappearance, Sarah had reported that an older man attempted to abduct her on her way home from church. This man, not identified by name, supposedly punched her in the face and body, and Sarah says she narrowly got away. In hindsight, however, investigators now believe Sarah may have made the story up. 
that it was a fabrication designed to disguise the abuse she was suffering from her own boyfriend. Investigators learned from friends of hers that a man she was dating was known to them only as Tony Z, but Sarah claims in the note that she is leaving on her own. There was rumors about a party that Sarah was at short, uh, days before, that there was some kind of a problem, but we can't find anybody who was at that party. We have uh, information that she was somehow involved with somebody named Tony Z. Investigators theorized the inexplicable Tony Z could be the abusive older boyfriend, and they expanded their investigation looking at cemeteries in Rochester to search for clues after county detectives received anonymous tips that Sarah had been at a so-called party at a local cemetery just two nights before she disappeared. There are no confirmed reports about just how many others may have been with Sarah, but law enforcement officials now regard this as a critical piece to the puzzle. We got into it pretty heavy uh, with the Rochester Township Police in, in really searching. Detective Lieutenant Clements was able to contact, she's going through the Doe Network, she saw a body that was found, uh, had red hair, and there was enough that made her at least feel that it's worth a phone call. We did get a call then from uh, the Portage County, Ohio uh, Sheriff's Office and the uh, caller was a detective who stated that uh, he recalled that back five or six years prior they had found two bodies on a peninsula that jutted out into uh, Berlin Lake, Ohio. And uh, that started it. It is now 2001. Detectives obtain DNA samples from the remains found in Ohio and send them out to be compared to a DNA sample from Sarah's mother, Phyllis, but results come back inconclusive. In March 2003, a second round of DNA samples are submitted. After two months of waiting, the tests come back as a match, positively identifying the body in Ohio as Sarah's. It has been nearly nine years since she disappeared. I had to tell my mom when we found out. I said, Mom, I'm at the courthouse, and I said, they've identified Sarah's body. The phone went, the phone went silent, and then I heard Mom draw in a deep breath. And I knew that it, you know, she was going to start crying. This is the general area where uh, Sarah's body was found. This is this area that we're looking at in here was an old homestead at one time. And as you can tell, you know, this is very desolate back here. Uh, we're probably back in the woods from the road about three quarters of a mile. The remains that uh, were in such a condition that there was no other forensic evidence left for us to go on. We can't really find a direct connection to Berlin Lake or Alliance, Ohio, or that Portage County area, uh, why Sarah would end up there. One theory involves another teenage girl, Catherine Menendez, from the nearby town of Alliance, who also went missing within weeks of Sarah's disappearance. The Menendez girl was found a couple of days after she went missing. Um, you know, a couple of tenths of a mile from here. So that, that's kind of a red flag. I mean, to have two young women's bodies found in an area like this um, in a time span where they both went missing within weeks of each other um, kind of res raises a red flag in the investigation. It was nice to know that, that we found out that we got her body, but then we realized, well, oh, somebody did this to her. Somebody did this to her. I know uh, my former partners are still very passionate about it. I mean, it's a kid that went missing from our county, you know, that was murdered. So uh, I believe they'll work it until they can't work it anymore. Was Sarah here willingly? Did something happen that night which led to her murder? Were there witnesses and why haven't they come forward? Investigators continue to work on solving Sarah's murder. 
Sarah Baim's story was a mystery that became a tragedy and then a mystery again. For their part, Sarah's family remains haunted by what or who may have led Sarah to leave home forever. Last I remember about Sarah Ray, just that I knew something was wrong. You could tell she was, she wasn't a happy girl. She wasn't, she was sad. 20 years went by qu pretty quick until I realized what has all happened in that 20 years that I've missed out on. And Sarah, myself, my family, and Sarah's, you know, loved ones, because she had friends that truly, you know, loved her and cared for her. Um, we've all missed out on 20 years of jokes, 20 years of just camaraderie, 20 years of, you know, I, I could have had nieces and nephews. My parents could have had grandparents or grandchildren. We don't know, because, you know, Sarah was taken from us. And just 20 years of her life was just taken. And, you know, th that's what makes me sad, is I'm, you know, missed out on 20 years of my sister's life. And I'm going to continue to miss out on her life.